Hi everybody, welcome to Cake Tastic Cakes. It's Jen and I'm going to show you how to make this Easter Bunny cake. And if you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe. And if you see me using any tools or supplies that you could use, check the link in the description below because it should be able to help you out. All right, now to begin my Easter Bunny cake, I'm going to start with the grass that you see in the little picture there behind the bunny. This is gum paste I am using. It's just green gum paste. I rolled it out pretty thin, but not too thin. I wanted it to have a little bit of stability to it still. And I rolled it out nice and long as you can see. And now I'm just cutting out little wedges so that if you were looking at it, of course, you know the grass would be upside down. I'm just using an X-Acto knife and I'm just freestyling just a bunch of blades of grass. And if they start to, you know, get too close together, or you can see it was kind of starting to all lean to one side, just cut a little you know, space out between your blades of grass and just keep right on going. And just keep going along until all your grass is cut out. Now I'm gonna want my grass standing up behind the bunny. So what I'm gonna do is I have that cake dummy there. I actually have a couple of them. And I'm gonna show you in a second. I put paper towels over it. I taped the two together. And then I used a bunch of toothpicks to just support the grass and then just left it that way. So that way it's going to be the right size for the curve. It's all going to dry nice and straight and standing up and it'll be perfect. So you just got to let it sit for a while now. Okay, this is just how I made the little Easter egg you see in the picture too. I just took some gum paste, colored it blue because I just thought it was kind of a pretty color. And I am just rolling it around in my hands until it's nice and smooth and egg shaped. Like no surprises there. For the polka dots on my egg, I rolled out some pink gum paste, nice and thin, as thin as I could get it pretty much. And I'm just using a circle cutter. I just cut out a bunch of circles and then just stuck them hither and thither all over the egg. And when I did press it on, I made sure to kind of press down on the circles themselves, the little dots, so that they wouldn't stick out too far from the surface of the egg. They do stick out a little, but not too bad. And by doing that, I'm going to, of course, change the shape of my little egg uh, a bit. So once I have my dots on, I just once again kind of roll it around in my hands a little bit just to smooth it all out and then put it aside and let it set. Good and good to go. For the cake itself, I'm going to be using fondant. I'm starting with green fondant here and I'm going to cover the top of the cake with it. I am using my cake dummies this time, so I wanted to show you the styrofoam dummy there. And normally if I was gonna put this on an actual cake, I would have used the cake pan to measure out the, the size of the circle to cut. But since I'm just using the dummy, I just went ahead and traced the dummy. I'm putting the green over the top as you saw, and now I'm gonna start building my rainbow across the side. So again, this is just some purple fondant, not gum paste, this is fondant. I'm using my wooden dowels to have it be the same thickness when I roll it out. And I am just going to roll it really, really long. I have a, when I measured it, it was about a four inch, a little bit over tier of cake there, or, you know, cake dummy. So these ribbons that I'm going to end up cutting out are three quarters of an inch, I believe, when it's all said and done. So once I get my stripe cut out, put it around the base of your cake, smooth it with your paddle, get to the next color. And I tried to Roy G. Biv it, so I did red, orange, yellow, blue, green, purple. I didn't do the indigo violet thing, but that's okay. And I also am stacking these backwards so that it'll start with the red and then work down to the purple. So my next stripe is blue. For some reason, I thought I was recording the green, but I didn't, <laughs> I forgot, sorry. So the green stripe is already on there. I'm adding my orange and then I will do my yellow stripe, same as before and same thickness, same everything. When you set these on top, you'll see that you can kind of just rest the color that you're placing on top of the band below it. So it'll just sit like right up against each other, nice and snug, nice and neat. And if it's all the same thickness and all the same length and everything, it just looks very nice and tidy and pretty when it's all put together. So my last one, this is supposed to be red, but I ended up choosing a rose colored instead because I was trying to keep it more spring colors, a little softer, a little more pastel-y. So that's why I went with this instead. But yes, there you go. Now to give it a little bit more decoration, I took some of the fondant from each of the colors I just used. And this is a little flower stamp kit that I have. And I'm just going to press out the largest five petaled flower there for each color. I'm going to do one for the pink, the blue, the green, you know, all the colors just like before. 
And when I get them all pressed out and ready to go, I'm going to then add them to the side of the cake. I'm just using a little bit of water on the back of each one and I am going to stagger them so they kind of go up at an angle. So I started with the green in the center and uh, thinking that was the right thing to do. I forgot that I have an even number of stripes and not an odd so it actually offsets the center of my cake a little bit. But that's okay. I, I survived. It's okay. So I stuck each one in its place, have them staggered, and it just looks pretty. It gives it a little more a little more detail, a little more something to look at. My grass has had plenty of time to set up, so now I just set that right on top, and it's like this green crown sitting on top of my cake. But now I'm going to show you how to make the bunny. Now, to begin my bunny, I am going to start by making its body. I have a big old wad of white gum paste here, as you can see. And right now it's kind of ball shaped, but I'm going to start to divide it, not quite in the middle, maybe about three quarters of the way up, mm, not even, more like two thirds of the way up, and section it off. So I'm going to start to make kind of like a snowman, if anything else. Uh, my second lump on the top that I am separating from the bottom is not centered though. It's a little bit pulled toward the front because I'm going to make my bunny have a big caboose and like a little rounded off chest kind of thing. So you can kind of get the idea of how the shape is coming along. It looks almost like a little duck or something at this point. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stick a lollipop stick down the center of it. I am using an eight inch stick because that's just the size I like to work with. I feel like it gives me plenty of wiggle room in case I have anything that I want to change or cut off or anything. It's, it's, there's plenty there for me. Now I'm going to stick it into my block of styrofoam because that will give it nice support for later on when I add the head. And I'm going to start working on the back feet. I have a piece of gum paste there, as you can see, and I've rounded it off and I am putting it up against the side of the bunny butt off. It's a little more toward the back of it, though. And that's going to become the bunny's like the knee, I guess, of the bunny's back leg. I matched up another piece. I had actually made one big piece and then cut it in half. That's why the first one you saw that little half circle sitting there. I find that's a good way to make sure your amounts are pretty even that way, you know? So if you take one big one and cut it in half, then you should have two equal smaller sizes, right? Makes sense. Geometry, see, you never thought it would pay off. All right, I'm going to go ahead and make the back feet of my bunny now. Um, kind of gonna make, I don't know, like an ice cream cone sort of shape here. It's going to be narrow and tapered and then kind of flare out into a ball at the end there. I use my knife blade to make the two indentations. As you saw, I roll it up and over so the toes are now separated. I cut it off at an angle on the other side so it'll just wedge nicely under the body. Tuck it in, you got a back foot. Do it again. It's making kind of like, I guess more like, like a chicken leg or something, a jerky leg. I'm using my knife to make the two little separations for the toes. It's flared in a big round foot in the front. Got to make sure they're the same size. Gonna cut off the edge at an, like a wedge at the back. It's still a little too long, so I'm gonna cut off a little bit more. And again, you know, make sure it ta tapers in, flares down. You don't want it to be too short though because it is still a rabbit after all. We need those quintessential little, little big, big back feet. Okay, once you get your back feet going, I've made a circle, kind of flattened it, and stuck it on the bunny's butt because our bunny needs a tail. And there we go, bunny's got a tail. He's coming along already, so, so so far pretty good here. This is going to be the fur that goes down the front of the bunny's chest. It is uh, just kind of a loose triangle shaped. I rolled it out long, as you can see. Trim off the top because it was all crooked and it was bothering me. And I just have it kind of long and thin and it goes down over the chest and down actually onto the belly as well. You, you know, you don't have to add this part or you could make it shorter or thicker or whatever you want. This is just what I did. I'm using the back of my veining tool to make a couple little furry marks on the sides so that it's not all nice and smooth. And then I'm using the small ball to push up on those marks that I made to kind of separate them. So now it's not just, you know, a straight cut with lines in it. It's actually segmented a bit. It's more of a scallop shape. See? Okay. Now I am going to add a little bit of water because I never did that to connect the feet. So that's what I was doing there. I figured it's important to show that you do have to put this stuff together eventually, permanently. All right, these are gonna be the front feet. I rolled out my big old piece of gum paste there, nice and long, and I get asked this question a ton, and I try to answer it every time. If I don't, I'm sorry. 
But most of the time, I say to everyone, use gum paste, right? You can use fondant in certain situations if the decoration is flat, if it's going to be laying down, you know, if you're not worried about that kind of thing. If you need it standing up in 3D like what I'm doing here, you could again use fondant. You'd have to add a CMC powder or Tylos powder or something like that to it to turn it basically into gum paste. It's more affordable, but you, if you've worked with both, you might find that the texture can be a little different. The consistency can be a little different. I don't know. I'm a big gum paste fan because it's literally what the, it was designed for. But if you're only doing a decoration here or there, it's more expensive. So, you know, fondant and CMC powder might be the better way to go for you. Now that I've finished my little rant there, I'm going to tell you I am making the other front arm now. It's the same as the legs, only smaller. It has kind of like the big ball at the end for the paw, the smaller, thinner arm. It's going to go up and wrap around, and I'm nestling them in that little, I guess, waistline, I guess you could say, of the bunny, how it kind of tapers in there. That's where I'm resting the arms and the paws, and I have it cut at an angle. So it goes up into the shoulder, and I'm also pressing it into the shoulder, so it really blends and merges in. And it doesn't stick out because our bunny has does not have, you know, quarterback <laughs> or football player shoulders. Now for the head. Okay, I started with a ball. I pressed in with my thumbs, as you saw, on either side there. Kind of like I'm making a skull or something. I used my rolling pin to make two big depressions like that. I'm just kind of going over it again and again. And I'm leaving space down the middle so my bunny now has kind of like a bridge of his nose. I'm using the big ball on my ball tool to press eye sockets because those big divots were not eye sockets. They were just, uh, you know, eye indentations <laughs> just to make my bunny look more bunny-ish. And I'm going to end up filling in the eye sockets later though, the smaller ones I made. Those two lines I made with my other veining tool and that I'm really accentuating here with my proper veining tool is going to become the bunny's nose. Now I'm going to kind of like press in and lift up and I'm doing that little line that comes down from the bunny's mouth and kind of flaring it out a little. See here I am, I'm pressing in to the and then lifting up under the nose so now the bunny's nose is actually coming out a little bit. It's um, a little bit more separated and three-dimensional from the rest of his mouth. And you're going to see I'm going to use the veining tool again to just make him a happy little bunny. I'm giving him a smile. I'm pressing to the side to make him have like little cheek dimples where his smile is just so big and so expressive. Yes. So yeah, there he is. Little bunny with his little bunny face. There you go. Just make sure the lines are nice and deep because gum paste does kind of rebound a little bit. Now, once the head has had a little bit of time to set, just carefully press it onto your lollipop stick. And then time to start filling in those eyeballs. I'm taking little balls of white gum paste and filling in those little sockets that I made. And I'm going to give him blue eyes because he has very little color going on. So I want to make him you know, a little more colorful, a little more springy. And he was looking a little cockeyed there, but, you know, <laughs> it, fit, it got fixed. I just put little balls of blue gum paste on there that I had pressed down on. Kind of make him into a little more of flat circles. But when I put him into place and use my ball tool there... I just press them even flatter, and there you go. See, cute, right? Not too shabby. Now I'm putting a little bit of water inside his nose, and I'm gonna take some light pink, roll it really, really thin into thin little beanies there, and I'm going to put it up and underneath his nose. Remember, we use the veining tool to lift upward on his nose. Now I'm going to use that pink so it's kind of tucked up and in, but it's gonna be under. So I'm gonna use my nail, the back of my fingernail, and press upward, so it's not gonna just show. It's gonna be tucked away as it were. I just liked how it looked. I thought it looked a little nicer that way. For his eyelids here, I took my white gum paste, used my circle cutter to cut out a circle. I cut just like a little crescent out of that, just like a little top part, and then just capped off his eyes, you see? So just gives him a little bit more of a um, relaxed look rather than the big eyed alarmed look that he was sporting a moment ago. And again, using my ball tool, my veining tool, just shape it right into the curve of the eye. I am being careful to not overlap the blue of his iris because I feel like I'm going to lose too much of his eye, make him look sleepy if I do that. I have some black gum paste now that I rolled really thin just on my hand, I'm using my finger, real nice and skinny, just to outline his eyelid. 
I'm not necessarily trying to make this bunny a boy or a girl, but there's a lot of white going on, so to make it so it stands out more, I decided to give a little black eyelashes there for the top lid. I'm adding some black balls now to the iris to make the pupils, just using my ball tool again to press it out and do a nice circle so that now my bunny is a little bit more anatomically correct. There you go. All right, now I'm going to make bunny's ears. I have white gum paste that I rolled, oh, kind of between my fingers you saw me do, um, so that it's thinner at the ends and thicker in the center, you see. I cut them off so they're the same size. And now I'm using just the handle of my paintbrush and pressing down in the center. And then I'm curved following the edge of the one side of the ear so that it like is straight on the inside, you see, and kind of pooches out in the center where that fatter area was before. And I'm just pressing along that outer side. I left the inside where it's straight more so alone so that I could add a little piece of dried spaghetti like that. Run it right up that thicker center part or the thicker inside part of the ear. And now I'll be able to attach the bunny's ears to his head and it'll be nice and steady and sturdy. And again, you know, just using the back of my, my um, paintbrush so there's nothing fancy there. I'm going to add some pink to the bunny's ears, so I rolled again <laughs> a long thin piece there with a little fatter in the center. I'm using, again, the handle of my paintbrush to roll as like a little mini roller just to flatten it out. So as you can see, it's kind of triangular shaped there once it's all said and done. I'm going to put that piece right inside the bunny's ear and you see how it kind of sticks out into the center. I'm going to make it so that it goes up against the straight part of the ear. And it just kind of gets a little fatter and wider as it goes out to follow that curve of the ear that I left before, if this is making any sense at all. At least you can see what I'm talking about. So again, it's like up against the one side of the ear and just kind of flares out to follow the curve outward of the ear itself. It doesn't go all the way up. I didn't want it to. You can if you want. I just didn't feel like I, I wanted that. I wanted a little more subtle. And once it's all said and done, I'm going to use, that's my cake tester, by the way. <laughs> it was my cake tester my husband got me because I like snowmen. So it has a little snowman on it that melted because it was test testing cakes in the oven. But anyway, I still love it. And once you have those pilot holes drilled, then you stick your spaghetti sticks in there with a little bit of water. Hopefully your ears aren't too heavy and will make it droop and fall off. This little bunny's ears were heavy, so I had to brace it with a dish towel for a little while so they could set. Once they set, then I came back and added a couple little white highlights to Mr. or Mrs. Bunny's eyes, or whatever this bunny is, the bunny's eyes, like that. Now bunny's got little sparkling eyes, and you can stop there, or you can keep going. This I just did for fun because I figured, why not? I made a little ladybug. So I took a ball of red gum paste, I cut off the one end, so now it's like a round piece with a flat end. I put a little ball of black onto that flat end and then just mushed it and pressed it so that it merged up with the rest of the red. So it all kind of went together. I used my knife to make a little seam mark down the center and then I just started adding some little black balls of gum paste to make the little spots on my ladybug. I put one in the center, a couple on each side. I believe a traditional ladybug has seven spots. Mine has six because I made too big of a dot, but oh well. I added a couple little dots of white on either side of the black piece of the head there. And again, this is just for fun. Why not? But if you do, you can put it right on his nose and there it is. <laughs> There's your little bunny. Good. Now let's pretend that bunny has had plenty of time to sit, like a couple days, okay? And when he is ready to go, you're just going to stick him onto your cake front and center. Let the whole world see how cute he is. Add your adorable little Easter egg. Use your ladybug if you decided to make it. I'm throwing some of my extra flowers that I always have on hand. Just to brighten it up, give it a little more color. Put it all together and you have a lovely little Easter cake. So I hope you found this video helpful. Once again, please like and subscribe because it really does help me out. I've got a ton of other videos out there, so take a look, see what you find. And as always, thank you for watching Cake Tastic Cakes.